it's great to be back with you this week. It's a bit colder and a bit less sunny than it has been in the past couple of weeks. And but a lot more windy We are excited well. to be here. Um, we're going to start with a game as ever. So Phil, would you like to explain what we're doing? Right, this is a really easy game. You can play along at home as well, okay? In a moment, Sarah and I are just going to mouth something and the other person's got to try and guess what the other person is saying. And you can, once you've had a little go of guessing what we're saying, you can pause and play with someone that you're watching with as well. So should we give it a go? Yep, cool, let's okay. go. Right, Sarah, you're up first, okay? okay? Make sure you're looking at the camera. I'm just here as well. Hello! Okay. So I can see what she's saying. Okay, you ready? Okay. okay, go on. What? <laughs> one more time, one more time. Spot your mum's bolognese? <laughs> <laughs> so you said SpongeBob SquarePants. No, you weren't saying SpongeBob Square. SpongeBob SquarePants. That looked like you were saying so much more than that. <laughs> oh my days. Okay, your right, turn. let me have a go. Phil, it's your turn. So off you go. Do it again. One more time. Yeah. There's something smells like something. Okay, so what were the two things? You're right. What give me, smells give like me, what? Give me the two words. Just one last time. There's something that smells like penguins. Oh, okay, I'll oh, Sarah Kelly. If you <laughs> if you guess that at home, the exact phrase was the panda smells like a penguin. What? Yes, I think Sarah Kenny royally won the challenge, to be fair. Well done. Have a little go at home now, guys, if you want. Do a little pause and have a little go with the people that you're watching with at home. Oh, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed that. You'll have to get in touch and let us know what some of the silliest phrases were that you mouthed at home. But as for this week, last week we were looking a little bit about when Jesus sent his Holy Spirit and we explored the difference that that made to the lives of his followers. And yet we're going to keep on looking at this over the next few weeks. But why don't you for today pause here and jump into today's story which is found in Acts 3 and 4 or use one of the animated videos included in the description below. <laughs> this amazing sign and wonder that God performed through Peter in healing this man, Peter then immediately uses to show who Jesus is to all of the people around him. When God heals and does the miraculous that cannot be explained, it points to a greater power beyond what we know. And that power is a person and his name is Jesus. Yeah, and when we pray, if we see someone healed, it's never because of us. It's not because we just tried really hard mm. that time and prayed a really good prayer. And mm. it's not because we happened to say all the right words that time. It is only ever and always because of Jesus and by the power of his name. And just like Peter, once we choose to follow Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And Jesus wants to use us to pray for people to be healed, just like his model to us in the Bible. And because of that, we can just pray really simple things like, oh God, will you please make better or please heal or mm. please make well or please take away their pain. As it is not our words or by saying a right kind of formula, As it is not our words or by saying a right kind of formula that means that someone's healed, it is only by Jesus that someone is healed and through his power at work in us, through the power of his name. Now we might not see everyone who we pray for healed and we might not understand why but ultimately we can trust God and we can trust that he knows what he's doing and we can definitely trust that he is good. 
for where we are now, living in kind of post when Jesus has come to earth and he's risen from the dead and he's now in heaven living, but one day he'll also come back. We see in part, we get a sense of what the kingdom of God might look like. We might see God perform signs and wonders. We might get a sense of him speaking to us, but we won't fully understand everything until one day when he returns or to when we get to be in heaven with him face to face and when he restores the kingdom of heaven to earth. Yeah, and we are to be obedient in the meantime to what God has asked us to do. And a big part of that is to go and pray for people that they would be healed. And actually we know and we can trust that it's God who does the healing. Mm. So the pressure's off us. Indeed. Indeed. The Holy Spirit fills the disciples with a passion for Jesus to share all about him, why he came to earth to die for them. And they reveal, just like Jesus did on the Emmaus Road, how all of scripture had been pointing to the time that they now lived in, that Jesus was the long-awaited promised king and they needed to put their trust and their hope in him and believe in Jesus. The miracle becomes a moment to point to Jesus because that is what the Holy Spirit always does. He always points to Jesus, he points to the Father. Yeah, and as Peter and John are talking, some priests over here, what they're saying, and they are alarmed. They see how such a large crowd have gathered and Peter and John and the disciples have them absolutely captivated. So they seize them and they put them in prison overnight. But because of what Peter and John have already shared, Many came to believe in Jesus and it says the number of people believing in Jesus grew to 5,000. The next day some of the high priests meet together to question the disciples by saying, by what power or by what name did you heal this man? And in Acts 4 verse 8 it says that Peter filled with the Holy Spirit explains to them that it was by the name of Jesus whom they put to death on a cross and God raised back to life that this man was healed. And he goes on to say to them that salvation can be found in no one else for there is no other name under heaven that has been given to mankind by which we must be saved. The priests are utterly amazed at their responses to their questions and seeing the courage of Peter and John, knowing that they are uneducated, ordinary men. Yeah, they're amazed by all that has been said and they note that these men have been with Jesus. No. Yeah. The Holy Spirit can give us the courage and words to say to explain Jesus and his good news to those around us in a way that leaves people realising that it can't not just be ordinary us speaking that, it must be Jesus. And the high priest told a little meeting to decide what they're going to do with Peter and John and ultimately they decide well, we'll have to release them but they give them strict instructions not to speak or teach about Jesus anymore. But the Holy Spirit gives Peter and John the courage to say to them, which is right for us to do to listen to you or God as for us we cannot start speaking about what we have seen and heard mm. these are the same people who were running for their lives when Jesus was taken to be put on the cross because they were worried about what might happen to them these are the same people that locked themselves in a room for fear of people finding out that they were followers of Jesus and now being filled with the Holy Spirit all of a sudden they've gone from these fearful people to being like hey try and stop us from talking about this amazing Jesus. They've had their eyes open to just how important Jesus is and how much everybody needs to know him. And the Holy Spirit has filled them with a boldness, with a deep love and with a passion for Jesus and he enables them to do things that they simply could never do on their own. When Peter and John return to everyone to tell them what had happened and what the high priests have said. It says in Acts 4 29 that they all joined their voices together in prayer to God and they did not say oh Lord please we're so so worried will you stop this from happening ever again so that we get to carry on sharing your word. No they pray now Lord consider their threats and enable us your servants to proclaim your word with greater boldness. They're not praying Lord sort this all out and then we'll go and be bold for you again. They're saying Lord I'm a bit worried I'm a bit scared but would you give us increased boldness and courage so that we will still go on proclaiming your word regardless. And they pray, God, stretch out your mighty hands, heal, perform signs and wonders through the name of your most holy servant, Jesus. Again, the focus isn't on the threats that they're facing because they are facing threats, mm -hmm. they're facing danger, but they're not focusing on that. They're saying, Lord, we still want to see you move in this time. Mm -hmm. We still want to see you doing stuff so we would be able to preach your word and tell people all about Jesus and how amazing he is. After they prayed, it says that the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak about God and his word boldly. They recognised that left to themselves they would probably cower and be scared to speak about Jesus but by the power of the Holy Spirit working in and through them. He, I nearly spoke over you then, sorry, he would enable them to speak boldly about Jesus and about his teaching and he would perform signs and wonders through them to the people around them. 
And the same is for us too. We might be facing situations where our friends or those around us might skit us from following Jesus. But we too, just like the disciples, can pray to Jesus in that moment and say, Lord, would you fill me with boldness by the power of your Holy Spirit? Yeah, that he would enable us to live bold and courageous lives with Jesus, to share all about him to those around us, to allow him to perform signs and wonders through him and ultimately just live really bold and courageous lives for Jesus, not by any of our own strength, but only through his strength, through his power, by the Holy Spirit living within us. And this was definitely true of my own life. When I got filled with the Holy Spirit, all this head knowledge that I had about God came to my heart. And I went from being someone who was actually quite scared to tell my friends about Jesus, to having this boldness within me. And I found that he could give me the words to say. And I, and I was filled with a passion and a love for Jesus that was not my own, but was his through me and it filled my heart with a love for people and that made me realize how great God was and how much people needed to hear about him and I realized that I didn't have to do this on my own anymore but Jesus could speak through me and all I needed to do was make myself ready and available for him and that he would do all the rest. Yeah and it makes such a big difference to our daily lives as well guys I love what Sarah said there about not being on our own I find one of the biggest spirits and um, one of the biggest differences that the Holy Spirit makes in my life is when I'm going into a situation that I'm worried about I mean maybe it is sharing Jesus with someone because I feel like he's told me to do that but maybe I'm just a bit worried about going into work one day or any of those normal life things I know the circumstances aren't going to change I'm going to go into something and it's going to be a little bit tough but I know I'm not by myself I know that I've got the fullness of God with me through the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of me I get to say Lord would you fill me with your hope would you fill me with your joy would you fill me with your peace even though my circumstances might be rough even though my day might be a little bit tricky I can have a hope that only comes from knowing that I have the God of the universe with me at all times that he has a plan so guys we're going to end that there for this week but can we just encourage you just to pray Mm. for a few moments before you move on you know we can ask the holy spirit Mm. to come and fill us we don't just have to wait we can say Mm. jesus i believe in you i read in your word that you say the holy spirit comes and fills us so Mm -hmm. can i have that now please i'd love to be carrying you around with me like that so um just encourage you to do that and you can check the guide for more activities and things to do as well so guys have a lovely week and we will see you next week